Today we're going to build the ultimate Sony a7R5 rig for video, as you can see by the numerous accessories here that I have in front of me. So maybe a couple of quick points before we begin. Number one, I'm going to leave links to all the items in the description below so that you can check these items out if you want, but feel free to ask any questions in the comments if you have them. And number two, of course, even though I'm going to be covering my Sony a7R5, which is the main camera we're going to be building out, this rig actually works with a number of other Sony cameras, and maybe that is how we'll first get into this by discussing the cage we're going to be using. So specifically, this is the small rig 3667. I actually have a video on this cage on my YouTube channel already talking about it in the context of using it with the a7 IV. Smallrig also does make a 3667B version of the cage that has a shoe mount here instead of just these regular quarter 20 3 8 mounting points. But this particular cage design works with a number of Sony's different models, and that includes the a7S III, the A1, the a7 IV, the a7R5, and the a7R4. So it's nice to see Smallrig take advantage of the very similar body design that a lot of these cameras have. In fact, I've used this cage with the a7 IV. I will probably use it even more so with the a7S III, and you can merely pop it off in a couple of minutes and swap them between the different models. So it's a really nice convenience to have. Now this cage design does have two different mounting points. You can see there is a bottom plate, of course, that mounts in a traditional quarter 20 thread. And I'll try to capture this in the best way that I can, but you also have a second mounting point, which uses the left side strap loop to secure the cage to the camera. So you're not going to get a lot of flex or give with the cage once you start adding heavier accessories to it, which is nice. Now there's actually two different mounting pieces for that side strap loop. One is labeled A74, and that is going to work with that body and the a7R5 as well. And then there's a very similar one that gets used for the a7S III, the A1, and the a7R4, as you can see here. So before I attach anything, I'm gonna actually just check to make sure that the cage is secure on the camera. One of the nice things about these small rig cages is that they come with different tools that actually magnetically attach to the cage. So it's very easy to adjust and tighten things on the fly if and when you need to. So I'm just going to make sure here that the quarter 20 thread is tight and secure here. It's been a little bit since I've actually checked that. And using the smaller side piece, I'm going to actually ensure that the two different side mounting pieces on the strap loop are also secure here, just to make sure that there's no play or any movement here. All right, so I'm just gonna put this tool back now on the cage. So let's next talk about power for this rig. I'm going to use, in this case, the Anton Bauer Titan Base Battery, which you can see right here. And there's a couple of reasons I really like this solution in terms of a battery and power rigging option for these types of mirrorless cameras. So with something like a V-mount or gold mount battery, you would really need to add NATO rails and a much larger and heftier support system to being able to secure a battery to a camera like this. Not to mention that also a lot of those solutions, again, with these mirrorless bodies tend to obstruct the screen in some form or fashion to where you have have to have it folded out, or really you can't move it or easily articulate it if you need to. Those batteries, I think, obviously work incredibly well with any cinema camera setups, but I really do think that the Titan base here, by using it as sort of the base and kind of foundation of your setup, is going to allow for a lot more flexibility with the rest of the camera body. And so let's talk about how we're going to actually power this using the camera. So along the bottom here, you have a little catch in the cage design that lets you open the battery compartment. And if I just take the battery out here, the Titan Base battery does actually come with a dummy battery design that you can use with this, and, you know, this would actually work fine, as you can see. Sort of just demonstrate that, but there are a couple different considerations and reasons why I don't necessarily use the dummy battery with this, so just to talk about that. So number one, as you can maybe see here, the Sony battery door doesn't actually have a catch in it, though I think previous models used to that allows for a dummy battery setup, so you'd have to leave this battery door at least somewhat ajar and open, which might of course impact the weather sealing of the camera if you're concerned about that, and is maybe just a little bit of an annoyance more than anything. The second piece here, of course, is the fact that even with the dummy battery, what you have in that case is basically no redundancy in terms of power with the camera. So if you were to accidentally disconnect from the battery and you were recording, you would immediately lose power in the camera. That could be somewhat of concern depending on how you're rigging this out. And if you ever do desire during a shoot to sort of strip down the configuration and maybe remove the battery, you would then have to have and provide a separate NPFC 100 battery anyway on hand. In this case, what I actually just like to do is keep an NPFC 100 battery in the camera, as you can see here. And then in this case, pretty much use the actual USB-C port to power it and use the USB type A port on the battery itself to power the camera. This basically means you have battery redundancy by having the battery in the camera and still powering it via USB-C. And if you're not using the camera at a certain point, it could actually provide power and charge the battery if you needed to. Now you do have this plate on the Titan base battery that you're gonna use to secure the camera. This does screw into the bottom here. I will admit this is a plastic plate, so maybe not the most secure thing in the world, but it does hold over time. Now when you're putting the plate on the camera, you have a couple of options. You could sort of lean it more forward here to where roughly two thirds of the plate is covered by the cage to where maybe a lot Lot more of it is covered by the cage. I think in this case, the more surface area of the cage you have on the plate, it's actually better and going to give less of a chance that it moves around on you. So I'm gonna secure it here. Again, we'll take our little tool out here and I'm just going to actually use it to secure the plate.
Okay, and that looks pretty secure there. So now I can, of course, put the metal tool back here. And this should pretty much just pop right on, as you'll see. So it snaps in. I have the battery on here. And as you can see, get a nice little added weight with the rig build also, which is going to be very helpful if you're doing any handheld shooting. And it works pretty just conveniently with this whole setup. So I've been really happy with the battery. And I might be doing a longer term review on how this battery works with the Sony Alpha camera. So definitely let me know if there's anything you wanna see or learn a little bit more about if and when I cover that. So as I mentioned, we're going to use a USB type A to USB type C cable to ultimately power the battery and connect it to the camera. I really like the 18 inch length of USB cables just because I think it provides a little bit of extra room so you can wrap the cable tightly around the cable in the body and you don't have necessarily just a piece kind of dangling off the side like you would with maybe a smaller cable. These are fairly cheap on Amazon. You can pick these up for around 10 or $15. This is a U-Green model that I'm gonna be using here. So in this case, just plug it in via the USB type A port. I'm just going to wrap the cable around this way and kind of tuck it in under the body here. And then just kind of pull it a little more taut just so I can have it kind of nice and tidy against the body. And then once I do that, just plug it into the USB type C port. So as you can see here, nice and simple, fairly tidy. Of course, you could do a little bit better cable management if you want, but even just this on its own should be decent enough. All right, before we build this any further, let's actually put a lens on the camera. Now I'm a little bit limited in terms of what I can use because I'm using a couple of my lenses now, but I figured I would use the 50 millimeter G Master. This is an excellent lens, of course, and I hope to be doing a longer term review on it fairly soon on the channel here. One thing I'm a really big proponent of is using these little rocket blowers just to make sure there's no dust or anything on the lens and on the camera sensor, making sure that I hold the lens elements down or the sensor down when I'm doing this so any dust blows out. I will now, of course, do the same with the a7R5. Put the lens on the camera, snap it into place, take the lens cap off again, slow the front to be extra safe. And there we go. Now in terms of the audio solution I use for my Sony Alpha mirrorless cameras, I'm a really big fan of the Rode VideoMic NTG. And I have an entirely separate review of this mic on my channel that I will link to above and in the description below that you can check out. But this will really ensure that you get much better than scratch audio out of your camera if and when you're recording different things. And in fact, I use these Rode VideoMic NTGs for a lot of these talking heads. I have one boomed above me right now that I'm using to film this video. So you get really excellent audio quality out of them. And I've been really happy for what they offer for the price point, which is around $250 US. Now when you get the Rode VideoMic NTG, they come with their own sort of TRS T RRS 3.5 millimeter cable, which is fine, works fine for this. But again, I'm really a big fan of a lot of the coiled cable designs, which you'll see me making more use of as I build this rig out. So Rode makes an SC2 cable. This is about $15, I think, or so that you can get separately. And this works really well. It is TRS only, so not something you'd want to use with your smartphone necessarily if you're rigging the mic up. But this is one of those little details that I think will help with cable management once we start building this out. So as you can see, you have a shoe mount here along this 45 degree angle on the side of the cage. I'm just going to attach the mic to the shoe mount, screw it into place. Then we'll open the 3.5 millimeter jack along the Sony and we'll connect this SC2 cable to the mic and the camera. And there we go, we have our audio. So now we can even start to build this out a little bit further by using a couple of other small rig accessories here. First and foremost, I'm a really big fan of top handles. This is the small rig 2165, which I actually own a couple of these. These adapt really easily to any of the small rig half cages, full cage designs like this one. Of course, like all the other small rig accessories, you get built-in tools that magnetically snap to it. So again, very easy to adjust things. This particular top handle design also uses the RE locating pins. So it's very secure once you tighten it onto the cage. So as you can see here on the cage design, we have the quarter 23 8 and RE locating pin section, which this handle will just screw into very nicely. So I'll just turn it by hand to at least get it mostly into place. And then again, if I need to, I can use the built-in wrench that comes with it just to more securely tighten it on there. But I think that should be pretty good. All right, now that we have a top handle on, I'm going to actually attach a side handle. So again, Small Rig has a number of different side handle options. This is the 2093. As you can tell, it's a wooden side handle which in this case also contains a shoe mount on top. Because again, maybe if you want to mount the mic here instead of on the side of the cage, or you want to attach something like a monitor or something else, you're going to have that flexibility there. Again, like all the other small rig accessories, you're going to notice it comes with a built-in little wrench tool that magnetically snaps into the side of it as well. So again, very handy. And this is built-in indentations for your hands and is made of real wood. 
as you can hear, so this is definitely a really nice, well-made, secure handle. They have metal options as well, but I tend to prefer this model. So you can see, of course, we have a couple of different options. If I wanted to attach it along the left side of the cage, I could, but I'm someone that tends to prefer doing this on the right side, just because I like the balance that has. If I'm doing any handheld shooting, I can wrap my left hand around the barrel of the lens and my right hand on the handle. I normally use the grip of the camera, but of course, we'll just build this out a little bit more. So I'm going to attach this handle right along the side here, and this should pretty much just screw right into place. And as I mentioned before, once we get pretty close to the end here, I can use the built-in wrench tool. So we'll take that out, and now we'll just make sure this is extra tight here. So I'm also going to use the wrench on the other side here to make sure that on the handle end, this is tight along here. So you can pretty much adjust this however low or high you want the handle to be relative to the rest of your cage. So we'll just give these a couple extra turns to make sure that they are tight as well. And I think overall we should be set here. So again, as you can see, now we have the handle on here. This is pretty secure, very tight. I'm happy with this. Now, when it comes to actually using a monitor and or in this case, an external recorder, I am a really big fan of the Atomos Ninja 5. This will, of course, allow for up to 4K 60p recording, not just in different ProRes formats like LT, HQ, but also ProRes RAW with this camera, the A7S III, the A1, all the Sony models that support it. I do believe we're still waiting on the firmware, at least on this, for this to work with the A7R5 because I did test it and it's not quite ready yet. But maybe once that's out, I can release a separate video on the Ninja 5 and how that works with the A7R5 and recording ProRes RAW. So, of course, of course, you also get all the great monitoring tools that would come with almost any other monitor, but including Atomos is like the Shinobi, so false color, waveforms, focus peaking, you can add LUTs to this to monitor if you're, say, shooting an S-Log3. Really useful all around. These used to retail, I think, for around $600 US, and you can now find these on sale periodically for around $400 US, so definitely something I would consider picking up considering just a monitor is usually going to run you around two to $300. Now you can get that and an external recorder for not too much more, so pretty good deal. Now in terms of how we're actually going to rig up the Ninja 5 with this cage design, we have a couple of different monitor mount options that I think are both really good that offer sort of different benefits depending on what you're looking for. So we'll talk about each of them. So the first option for this is going to be the Manfrotto 492. I really like this option for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is a shoe mount based monitor mount. So it will attach into any kind of shoe adapter. So again, if we wanted to mount a monitor, say along the side here on the side handle, or if we want to do the top handle, that's going to work fine with that. Number two, just to demonstrate this briefly, I'll kind of attach this quickly to the Ninja 5. First and foremost, let's just put this on, let's say the top handle, snaps right into place. You can tighten it down very easily. Because this has a ball head, you can easily configure this in myriad different options. So if you're someone that wants to operate the camera from the side, you can mount this as you can see. So it's on a 90 degree angle. You have an indentation along the side here, so you could easily make this monitor so that it faces upward, or perhaps maybe alternately, you could have it facing downward. It really allows for almost any angle or configuration, which I think is a really nice benefit, say, compared to some other monitor mounts that are a little bit more fixed. So this is one of my more favorite flexible monitor mount options that I think exists out there. This is a little bit pricey. This usually comes in around 60 to $90 US, depending on where you're seeing it or if there's a sale, but I do think it's actually a really good monitor mount and it's worth the price. Now to offer sort of a second option here, which yes, Small Rig also offers a number of different monitor mounts. This one in particular is the BSE-2348, which honestly, there's a lot of different very similar options to this. In fact, I'll probably link to a couple below. And I really like this as sort of a more conventional standard monitor mount that'll let you get all the different sort of tilt-based configurations and allow you to sort of have an even lower profile once you're setting this up with the cage design. Now that's mostly because with the top handle, you see you have the three ace and RE locating pins there. So if and when you want to, you can basically just attach this right along here. Again, very easily sort of hand turn this in. And this also does come with its own wrench tool, of course, which you can use and which we'll use to tighten the Ninja 5 in this case to it. So initially we'll just do a little bit of hand tightening here to get it set up. And again, once we're fairly tight here, we can start to use the Allen wrench tool just to get it a little more secure. And again, this monitor mount does allow for left and right. 
and up and down. So this is also fairly flexible here. I think this retails for around $60 US. Maybe not as flexible as the Manfrotto in terms of having the ball head design, but also does allow for a good amount of configuration. Now you would typically power the Ninja 5 using Sony NPF batteries, which as you can see along the back here, there is a slot for, but the Ninja 5 also does come with this adapter that allows you to use a P-tap or D-tap connection. So in this case, we're going to use the Titan base to power this and just pop this into where the battery would go on the Ninja. So we'll just make sure we press down the battery release when we do this and Okay, we just heard that snap into place, so that should be good. And we have a D-tap or P-tap cable here that we'll use to just attach it to the battery here. Probably attach it along the back side here, I would say. So we'll pop that in, tighten it. And again, this has a nice coiled cable, so it should stay relatively managed. I'll just kind of feed this in between the side handle here, make it a little more convenient. And then we will pop this in to the D-tap connector. And of course, we still have to connect the Ninja to the A7R5 itself. So I have the Atomos coiled HDMI cable that I'm going to use for that. Condor Blue's coiled cable might be another nice choice if you don't necessarily mind a more colorful cable design. I tend to like black just to keep things low profile here, so we'll use this. And so in this case, we'll just plug it into the HDMI input here. And once I open the HDMI port on the A7R5, I should be able to just connect it here like so. And so at this point, our rig build should be complete. As you can see here, I can still open the flip screen, maybe not in its most flexible of configurations, but yes, can still ultimately open it up fully, or if I need to, tilt it back, extend it out from the camera. So we're unobstructed here. And again, something like the Titan base allows for that by having the battery on the bottom here. As you can see here, I can turn the camera on, I can turn the Ninja on, and we can monitor the signal here and use it as a monitor. We could also externally record if we need to, and I still have access to the screen if and when I want to use it for different things. And of course, as noted, we're powering the Ninja 5 via the Titan base battery and powering the camera through the battery as well, but still having redundancy with the NPFC 100 battery in there using the USB connection. So that is my video rig build for the Sony a7R5. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. A lot more to talk about both regarding the a7R5 and some of these different rig accessories that we talked about here. So definitely subscribe if you're looking for some more content around that because that will be coming in the future. For now, that is all I have to say. So thanks for watching.